Hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. One statement that I thought I would never say as a parent was because I said so. I think that uh, to me that statement just seems a little cold, a little harsh. And I, the first few times I told my kids that statement, I cringed a little bit because uh, I too had been told that as a kid as well. And, and maybe all of us have where our parents tell us to do something and we ask, uh, why do I have to do this? And then they just say, because I said so. Um, there's many reasons why parents do that. Maybe it's a time restraint. They don't have time to go through the list of reasons why they need you to do something. They just need you to do it because they said so. Or maybe it's to avoid the thousand whys that kids give. Uh, to avoid an argument with the children, they'll just say, because I said so. Well, as we think about that, I wonder if God doesn't oftentimes... Uh, have that same uh, statement ready for us. Maybe not in that exact, uh, those exact words, but kind of the same idea. Because oftentimes we question God and we question his plans. We question what he's doing. Uh, we look at the world and we see uh, all the things that are going on and we wonder, you know, why is God allowing these sort these certain things to take place? We look at our personal lives and we wonder why we're having to deal with this, why we're having to deal with that. Sometimes we just need to remember that he is God and he doesn't necessarily have to answer all of our questions. And it's for us to recognize that he is our maker, he is our creator, and that we must submit to whatever plans and whatever decisions that he has for our lives. The Jews at one point would have to come to terms with that. As we go into our reading in Isaiah 45, we really have in Isaiah 45, Romans 9 through 11 in concise form. Uh, if you read Isaiah 45 with Romans 9 through 11 in the back of your mind, you're going to see a lot of similarities. And basically what Isaiah does here, or God through Isaiah does, is he talks about Cyrus. And he talks about the fact that Cyrus is going to come and he was going to uh, come from the east. He was going to destroy uh, Babylon, he's going to allow the people to go back uh, to the land and build up the temple. We talked about that yesterday in our reading in chapter 44. But what this was going to do is set up the stage for the Messiah, the, the very one that uh, Cyrus was a, a type of, as we talked about yesterday. And through this setting, uh, the foundation for what would later take place, all of the ends of the earth were going to find salvation. Uh, it talks about how the heavens were going to drip down and it, and from above. And it says, let the clouds pour down righteousness, verse 8 says. And let the earth open up and salvation bear fruit and righteousness spring up with it. The idea that uh, all of the earth was going to receive the reign of righteousness. And God was going to open up the means of righteousness to everyone through Jesus Christ. But part of that plan would include hardening some of the hearts of the Jews. Some of the Jews would be hardened at the message of Jesus Christ when he came claiming to be the Messiah. Their hearts would be hardened and it was a stumbling block for the Jews. But through that stumbling, salvation extended to all the earth. Uh, it provoked them to crucify Christ, which uh, supplied the sacrifice necessary for this righteousness. They also persecuted the early church in Jerusalem, which caused them to spread out into Samaria and further north. Antioch was built. The church of Antioch was built. And then Paul and Barnabas, who were a part of Antioch, then went uh, west. And they brought the gospel to the west. And others went east. And others went south. And to all the earth, the known earth at the time, had received knowledge of the salvation of Jesus Christ. But some of the Jews would complain and say, well, I thought we were God's chosen people. We, I thought we were the ones that were supposed to be the golden child. We were the ones that were the eldest brother. Uh, you know, it, it goes very much along with Jesus' uh, parable of the prodigal son. Uh, much of that has to do with the Jew and Gentile situation. The Gentiles are the youngest brother who went out, left the Lord, got involved in idolatry and all other types of immorality. But then through the preaching of the gospel, they came back. 
And the eldest son, the Jews, is going back and saying, wait, you never made merry with my friends. You never killed a, a goat on my behalf. Uh, but he says, you know, you've always been with me. But nonetheless, they became provoked at the fact that the Gentiles were receiving salvation. But Paul says this is all a part of God's plan. Yes, some of the Jews are stumbling. This was a, for the purpose of bringing salvation to the Gentiles, but because of the mercy given to the Gentiles, even Israel will be saved as well, uh, as he talks about in chapter 11 of Romans. But in the midst of all that conversation, he quotes and, and speaks very closely to a, a statement that is found here in Isaiah 45, where it says in verse 9, Woe to the one who quarrels with his maker, and an earthen well ves earthenware vessel among the vessels of earth. Will the clay say to the potter, what are you doing? Or the thing you are making say, he has no hands? Woe to him who has, who says to a father, what are you begetting? Or to a woman, what are you giving birth? Or to what are you giving birth? There it's being prophesied that that was going to be the attitude and the, and the conclusion that many of the Jews would make in the first century after God brings the salvation to all the earth. But God says that, you know, I am the maker. I am the creator. And he says in verse 11, Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker. Ask me about the things which should come. And he goes on to talk about how um, he stretched the heavens with his hands. He is the creator of all things. Um, in other words, they needed to just submit to him because he was their maker. They were not his maker. And they needed to be reminded of that. So as we think about this from a personal standpoint, we, sh we should be reminded too that God has a plan. He has an ultimate plan for the world, an ultimate plan of where he's leading humanity. Uh, ultimately, it's going to lead to maybe some dark days, but ultimately to some wonderful days. The new heavens and the new earth, where there will be joy and bliss and happiness. No more death, no more sorrow, no more sickness. But there's a process to it, and there's a plan that he has in place until that is accomplished. And are we going to submit to that? Or will we shake our fists and say, why, Lord, why why is this happening? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And there comes a point where we just have to say, he is God and we are not. Uh, we have to come to a place where Job came to when he didn't receive any direct answers for what he was going through. We just cover our mouths and say, you know what? We're just going to go along with what God has planned. He is God, we are not. And we are going to submit to whatever he has. And that goes for our personal lives as well. Sometimes things happen beyond our control. And we wonder why they're happening that way. And it can be difficult and it can be hard. But if, to the extent that we submit to God and allow him to do his work in our lives and, and recognize that he does have good intentions for us to bring about our ultimate good, that's the extent to which we will find peace in the midst of the situations that we find ourselves in. So, as we read Isaiah 45, we can reflect on Romans 9 through 11 and think about the Jews and think about uh, the mindset that they have, but we can also think about it in a personal way and wonder if maybe there's some times that we have similar questions and doubts in connection to God and, and how we, perhaps we ought to deal with those sorts of things and what type of attitude we should have towards God when faced with those type of things. So with that guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.